Chapter 341, Such an Unreasonable Man Lu Xu waited in front of the buffet restaurant with sheer boredom displayed on his face while inside. Chen Zuan stuffed himself with three days' amount of food. After much discussion, they both agreed that was the best option, to keep him full without losing too much face. In Lu Xu's opinion, there was nothing to be ashamed of if one could, with his own abilities, eat a 15-day portion of food in one shot. It was an all-you-can-eat buffet after all. But it was a different case for Chen Zuan, who found it really hard to forego his high reputation. Nonetheless, buffets were not cheap either, and the cheapest near them cost 49 yuan. When Chen Zuan was eating inside, Lu Xu had to wait outside with two buns as his breakfast, while he squeezed his brain juice for other money-making methods. As he was not a business genius, Lu Xu had no plans in particular as well. Otherwise, why would he painstakingly go and sell hard-boiled eggs back then? Was making money truly that easy? Not quite. Only the cream of society could gain a fortune from nothing, and most likely they themselves were blessed with sufficient knowledge in this area. Was Lu Xu equipped with such expertise? No. Honestly speaking, the main difference between him and the other class aptitude students was not their intelligence, but how much they cared about their image. In recent years, Lu Xu had long since come to learn how to let down his face, and to be in awe towards life. But those geniuses were different. They grew up in the protected environment called home, and schools never conducted lessons on survival. Even their parents would say, studies are your sole priority. Besides that, you don't have to worry about anything. They have never faced the pressure of surviving. After two hours, Chen Zuan walked out. He saw Lu Xu squatting besides the door and his heart was suddenly seized with guilt, thinking that Lu Xu was not even willing to have a buffet, unlike him. Chen Zuan said, Lu Xu. Do you want a? Before he could finish his sentence, Lu Xu was already up, since you are full and energetic, I suggest you better work hard. Go and find ways to make money. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 199. Strange, Chen Zuan thought, in Lu Xu's presence, he could never be happy for long. After another two hours, Lu Xu and Chen Zuan were walking on the streets, with dozens of pleasant goat balloons in each one's hand. They were aiming for crowded parks, especially those frequented by parents and their kids. Surely, children were fond of those things and usually, their parents would be willing to pay for their low price. When Lu Xu and Chen Zuan bought the balloons, they were sold in sets of 50s and each set cost 13 yuan. Moreover, the seller provided free inflation services and adopted the strategy of small profits with quick turnover. Lu Xu was planning to sell them for 5 yuan each. In his impression, such balloons usually cost 10 yuan, but he intended to follow the balloon seller's strategy. Moreover, his target was to survive for 15 days, not to cover for his school fees. Lugging 25 balloons each, the pair proceeded forward. Luckily, Chen Zuan was familiar with the places in the capital, and he knew a prime location. I need you to treat these balloons as our lives. Understood? If nobody buys them, you'll feel as if you are going to hell. Lu Xu educated Chen Zuan, worried that he might not lower himself to sell balloons. On their way, they saw an iPhone lying quietly on the floor in front of the Golden Arch. When Lu Xu was about to pick it up and find its owner, it rang. Lu Xu answered the call, Hello? The caller started his onslaught, You'd better return my phone to me. My phone has GPS and I already know where you are. At that instant, Lu Xu's hot temper was provoked. He immediately tied all the balloons to the phone and let go. Fine, let the wind take it to whatever place it wished and ask your damn GPS to track it down. The only way to deal with an unreasonable person was to be just as unreasonable yourself. Chen Zuan was dumbfounded. Staring at the flying pleasant goats, the little fatty said after a long silence, half of our lives have flown off. Shut up, Lu Xu regretted his impulsiveness too. As for the remaining 25 balloons, Lu Xu took 13 and the little fatty took the rest. 
as the saying went, it was always easier said than done. They spent a total of six hours to sell out the bloody balloons. It was not due to too few customers, but the intense competition in the park. At the entrance alone, there were at least seven people selling a wide variety of balloons, even including some Spider-Man ones. But pleasant goats were the only type they had. Yet, their main attraction was their price. When other people were selling at 10 yuan each, theirs was at 8 yuan. In total, they made a profit of 200 yuan, not excluding 13 yuan of the original cost. Not sure whether they are stealing our money tonight, distress was written all over Lu Xu's face, if they aren't, we'll have one less source of income. Chen Zhuan was agitated at once, what if they come in dozens? Isn't that more money? Lu Xu was confused. From Chen Zhuan's distress, plus 199. Was that the correct logic? That night, Lu Xu and Chen Zhuan moved back to the furniture mall. Despite Lu Xu's eager anticipation, no one came again. Could it be that they were afraid of him? Nonsense. It would be a joke to claim that the Heavenly Network would be scared of a Class C individual. Or maybe, Nia Ting deemed his earnings on the first day as unscrupulous. Thus, he was determined to take his money away? Lu Xu suddenly wondered how the other geniuses were doing. Did they get robbed too? Speaking of which, they had no money to be robbed anyway. Now, Lu Xu even had the idea of going back to the metro station to smash stones again, so that how Ji Chao's people would be drawn to him. But on a second thought, the money, which he had got after so much hard work, had to be handed over to Nye Ting in the end. It didn't sound like a good plan after all. On the third day of the survival challenge, Lu Xu dragged Shen Zuan out of his bed as early as 6 a.m. Indeed, it was a truism that the early bird catches the worm. Soon, they saw an old man selling grapes at his stall, with a sign in front which read clearing all grapes at low price. Need to take care of my sick wife at home. Lu Xu stopped before the sign, but the man's distressed expression did not look fake. Approaching the man, he asked, Excuse me. How much are these grapes? These are all homegrown grapes and I've been selling here for two days. Yesterday I was selling at 9.6 yuan per kilogram. But today, I suddenly received a call from my wife saying that she's sick. So I need to get rid of these fast to go back and take care of her. If you want to buy, I can give you at 4 yuan per kilo. Lu Xu hesitated, how many kilos in total? The old man thought for a second and said, should be more than 50 kilos. Lu Xu asked, can I taste? Of course. Lu Xu plucked one for a taste. It was very sweet. Chapter 342, Du Xu Ma. Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios. 300, I'm taking everything. You can go home now, Lu Xu grinned. He would be a grape vendor today then. A grateful look immediately appeared on the old man's face, thank you, young man. No problem. Everyone has a difficult time. You can leave the sack to me. I'm selling right here, Lu Xu said. Chen Zhuan was hesitant, can it work? These grapes won't be fresh tomorrow. I'm afraid we can't sell them all. If we can't sell them out, so be it. Not a big deal, Lu Xu smiled. Chen Zhuan was in disbelief, since when was Lu Xu so kind? But what he did not know was that an old grape vendor had given Lu Xu two sesame cakes during his most difficult time. Of course, the two vendors were not the same person. But after that incident, Lu Xu had always had a good opinion of grape vendors. This made Chen Zhuan's impressions of Lu Xu conflicting. Sometimes generous, but sometimes stingy like hell. After the old man left to take care of his wife, Lu Xu and Chen Zhuan sat by the street to sell their grapes. On second thoughts, Chen Zhuan asked, Can I have a cluster? We have so many. Nope, Lu Xu declined politely, these are all our resources. We need to depend on them for survival. Sulking, Chen Zhuan sat aside alone. 
Just after 6 a.m., some elderly people came out to shop for groceries, as in the early morning, groceries were usually cheaper. One person walked past the grape stall and wondered how the vendor became two young men. Another person asked, how much? 4.8 per kilo, Lu Xu smiled warmly. Can I have a taste, the granny asked. Sure. Have a taste, Lu Xu grinned. After eating five grapes in a row, the granny was satisfied, quite sweet. Then, she left. Lu Xu's face darkened at once, even then you were still not buying? After that, the same incident occurred several times continuously. Lu Xu was totally annoyed. Why was everyone so unfriendly? At that moment, another nanny came, carrying a basket in her arm, how much? 4.8. Can I have a taste? No, Lu Xu rejected mercilessly. By his side, Chen Zuan almost burst into laughter. Which fruit vendor did not let his customer taste his fruits? The granny was shocked too, if you don't let me taste, how do I know whether it's sweet or sour? Lu Xu plucked one grape and threw it into his mouth, I taste and you judge from my facial expression. From Wang Huelan's distress, plus 399. What's wrong with young people nowadays? Are they insane? The nanny left in fury. <laughs> Brother Xu. I have a feeling that we really can't sell them all. Chen Zuan laughed his head off. So what? Am I starving you, or what? Lu Xu was unhappy. Unexpectedly, at that instant, they heard a mellifluous voice, Little fatty, why are you selling grapes here? Lu Xu turned to see Chen Zuan's face blush instantly, and when he turned to the other side, he saw an unfamiliar, graceful girl squatting in front of their stall. Despite her ordinary look, her mien was gentle and attractive. The girl sensed confusion from Lu Xu's face at once, Hello, I'm Du Xu Ma, do you, do? Oh. Lu Xu recalled that Chen Zuan had mentioned her before. Thus, he introduced himself, My name's Lu Xu, vertical horizontal vertical turn vertical, Lu. From Du Xu Ma's distress, plus 199. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 199. Could you please just say Lu, Lu? Other people explained by the spelling of letters, only Lu Xu would rather choose the strokes. Hey, why are you here, Xu Ma? Chen Zuan was embarrassed. How unlucky must he be to be forced to make a living in the city and meet the girl of his dreams in such a sorry state? Lu Xu took a glance at him. A professional joker who was scared of girls? Du Xu Ma was stunned for a while by Lu Xu's self introduction, why are you selling grapes here? I was at my grandma's house, and just now she told us that there were two crazy people downstairs selling grapes who didn't even let her try the fruits. I was about to go home, so I hope to take a look here. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 199. Chen Zuan immediately covered his face. What the? The granny just now was Du Xueme's grandma? If they really got together one day, how could he have the face to meet her grandma? Chen Zuan was thinking too far ahead. Let me help you, Du Xueme smiled, from what I see, you may offend more people than the grapes you can sell. Lu Xu could not have asked for anything else, that would be great. What? Xueme, you can go home first, Chen Zuan pulled Lu Xu aside, she's from a prestigious family and you are asking her to sell grapes for you? Lu Xu was displeased, isn't it good for you? I'll excuse myself later, so that you two can spend some time alone. I can tell that she doesn't dislike you at all. So bro, seize this opportunity. Chen Zuan was shocked, makes sense. Where are you going then? I'll find a place for some rest. Remember the fight last night? I didn't get a good sleep, Lu Xu said as if it was deserved. So, you simply want to slack, right? From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 299. In fact, Lu Xu was not planning to slack. He just wanted to check on the other Daoyuan class students. 
if anyone had found a way to make money, he could mimic them as well. In this aspect, Lu Xu firmly believed in the tenet of live and learn. His first stop was the train station. However, no one was there except Cheng Chiuqiao, who was making a living by carrying goods. Under the hot summer sun, he had become even more tanned. Cheng Chiuqiao was glad to meet Lu Xu, why are you here, Lu Xu? Thought you were fetched away by a car? Lu Xu did not know how to reply. Didn't Ye Ting force him to come back? He had no choice. He suddenly asked, Did you run into a group of men in black? Cheng Chiuqiao was shocked, Lu Xu, your buns were stolen too? No. You have no buns. <laughs> My apologies. I mean, you were robbed too? Lu Xu was confused, what buns? After knowing what happened to the rest on the first night, Lu Xu gasped in astonishment, they even stole your buns. Then what did they steal from you, Lu Xu? Chang Chiu Chiao was curious. Lu Xu found it too embarrassing to tell the truth that instead of getting robbed, he robbed those people. According to Chang Chiu Chiao, the heavenly network would come after resources that were earned illegally or not through one's own abilities. Lu Xu was suddenly confident about drawing Hao Ji Chao's team to him again. Chapter 343 Breaking a Contract Besides Cheng Chiu Chiao, Lu Xu did not manage to find anybody else. In any case, they all had scattered for a living by themselves. Even the most self esteemed person would understand the importance of survival after two days. However, Lu Xu was still uncertain about the purpose of the assessment. No one would be so silly as to do something unlawful, while being fully aware that they were being assessed by the heavenly network. Actually, instead of an assessment, maybe it was more of a boot camp to dampen their pride. And Lu Xu agreed that it was definitely meaningful and necessary to mold those geniuses from ambitious individuals, with puny abilities to people who were willing to get their hands dirty in the delivery of optimal performance. If they were still unable to let go of their genius's burden during battles, it would become their greatest flaw. When Lu Xu returned, Du Xueme had already left. Seeing Chen's wand cheerfully counting money beside the road, Lu Xu froze, it sold out? So fast? <laughs> Take a look at who's the seller, Chen's wand's nose was in the air, it's Du Xueme. Based on the first half of your sentence, I thought you were walking on air, Lu Xu said, his face expressionless, let's go. Big money awaits. Chen Zuan's face lit up, big money? What big money? In five minutes, Chen Zuan grumbled as he picked up stones, Lu Xu, are you kidding me? You are using your power to make money again even though we already have the starting fund? They said we can play by fair means or foul. Am I not following the instructions given? Lu Xu was irked. I have a feeling that you have hidden agendas, Chen Zuan had a bad hunch. As soon as Lu Xu came back, he was resolved to perform at the metro station again. It was too abrupt. They were picking stones all the way to the previous metro station, where the middle-aged man named Wang Xianda still sang there. The man sang, today, an empty shell is all I have, to embrace the golden ages, to hold tightly my freedom in the wind. In that instance, he almost stopped when he turned and saw Lu Xu and Chen Zuan. Hold tightly his freedom in the wind? He'd rather hold tightly to himself. In fact, he was a bit hesitant on his way there the day before. At this metro station, which was the most populated around the region, he would get a fair earning every day. But at the same time, scarred by Lu Xu's ability to break stones with his bare hands, he surely did not wish to see that weirdo again. After one day of waiting, Wang Xianda was finally certain that the two kids would not come again. Thus, he had decided to stay. However, here they were. The sack in the young man's hands already frightened him. Lu Xu did not bother to waste his time on the man either. Quickly and decisively, he started his performance. Enduring a lifetime of struggle. Ka. Confidence can change the future. Ka. Wang Xianda could not bear it any longer, young man, you can't go on like this. 
how about we keep a distance between us? Leaning against Wang Xianda, Lu Xu smashed another stone with his forehead, what? I can't hear you. You won, Wang Xianda left at once with his guitar and called the police at the same time, hello? Police? There are two crazy people at the metro station. A commotion has already started. As for Lu Xu, he also planned to get it done fast and leave once they earn 200 yuan. Admittedly, breaking stones on his forehead was indeed a brainless job and the only requirement was a hard head. His audience too were very horrified to learn that all the stones he used were real. The pair left immediately once they got the money. Things would become too complicated when the police came. Lu Xu, please tell me the truth. What are you going to do? Chen Zuan frowned. In fact, Zuan was a typical braggart with greater ambitions than guts. He used to boast about his flirting skills, but when Du Xu Emei was there, he could not even speak properly. But he was not always a coward either. Unlike those candidates who almost jumped out of their skin at the Beimang remains, this fellow still had some courage. In general, he was just a horny little fatty. Now, he had a feeling that Lu Xu's ultimate goal was not making money at all. If it were, based on his personality, would he have left at only 200 yen? With no intention to frighten the little fatty, Lu Xu did not tell him. At nightfall, Chen Zuan urged, let's hurry. The furniture mall is closing. We'd better go in early to hide first as they have replaced the rooftop door last night. No rush, Lu Xu walked together with Chen Zuan on the streets, further and further away from the mall which intensified Zuan's ominous feeling. In the end, they walked until midnight. Chen Zuan struggled to stay awake, my dearest brother Xu, can we please go back to sleep? Where on earth are you going? Waiting, seeing that the time was about right, Lu Xu was elated. Honestly speaking, he was not too sure whether they would be coming or not but if they did, was it not additional income? The two would run once they got the money, and Nye Ting could not possibly hunt them down over and over again. At that moment, they suddenly heard the roar of car engines coming from the empty streets behind them. Lu Xu was buoyed, they were finally here. However, something was wrong. Why did it sound like a fleet of cars? Within a few seconds, a total of ten black cars emerged into view and screeched to a stop in front of them. A person jumped out of the first car, a familiar face, Hao Ji Chao. Following that, an average of five to six people alighted from each car. Counting the drivers. There were over sixty people in total? Lu Xu drew in a cold breath. An Chen Zuan almost fainted on the spot. Sneering at Lu Xu, Hao Ji Chao hissed, beat him up. Among them, everyone was dressed in black with a black mask on their face. The aggression from the 60-plus people was clearly obvious. They were a group of true fighters. The best of the best in the heavenly network. Suddenly, Lu Xu felt a gush of strong wind, as though all his rivals were riding on the wind to increase their speed. He even sensed a distortion in his vision, as if those people were powerful enough to change the passage of light. Who knew how many pros among these experts had been training in both cultivation and power awakening? Lu Xu, I'm getting nervous, Chen Zuan shivered. Yeah, me too, Lu Xu was almost desperate. Did Hao Ji Chao not say that he would only bring 20-something people next time? What happened to trust? Screw you, Nia Ting. Chapter 344, Save Me, Brother Shu Lu Shu's legs went numb when countless men in black swarmed towards him. It would have been much easier had the team only consisted of practitioners. After all, they were restrained from using flying daggers. But now, there were metahumans among them too. There were so many types of metahumans and who the hell knew what power they had awakened to. Lu Xu's impressive defense and attack abilities were instantly rendered useless. Run. Lu Xu turned and ran immediately. As the saying went, a wise man knows when to retreat. For God's sake, how could the pair defeat 60 plus people? But when Lu Xu turned, Chen Zuan was already more than 20 meters away. 
Despite the head start, Chen Zhuan's speed was no rival to Lu Xu's. After merely two seconds, Lu Xu had overtaken Zhuan. The little fatty was flustered, save me, brother Xu. In fact, Lu Xu's speed could easily allow him to escape from his practitioner pursuers. Yet, right at the moment when he thought he could escape easily, he heard the roar of engines from the direction he was running in. What the? Lu Xu immediately hastened to the left, way ahead of Chen Zhuan. Honestly, Lu Xu was unwilling to leave him behind. Although the little fatty was indeed fat, his weight was almost insignificant for a Class C metahuman of strength type. However, when Lu Xu was about to return and save the little fatty, to his surprise, those people ran past Chen Zhuan without even a second look at him. Clearly, he was the sole target. Chen Zhuan suddenly realized it too. Catching his breath, he burst into laughter. <laughs> Take care, Brother Shu. In fact, they were both aware that once they were caught, they might be beaten, but they were not in life-threatening danger. Thus, Chen Zhuan actually wanted to see how Lu Xu would be beaten, since in his mind Lu Xu had never been whacked by anybody before. After the little fatty stood still, another fleet arrived. Instantly, 60-plus people got off the cars and when they saw Chen Zhuan, they were surprised, where's the other one? Someone listened carefully, they are heading south based on the footsteps. We are a bit late. People in black masks exchanged confused looks, so? How about we beat this kid up and report back? Beat him. Chen Zhuan turned and started running at his full strength. What the hell were they doing? As a matter of fact, the heavenly network experts in the capital were relatively freer than those in other places because no external organizations dared to cause trouble in somewhere so central which was even helmed by Nye Ting himself. Lu Xu ran in between the buildings like a nimble squirrel. After entering the housing area, Lu Xu and his pursuers kept their actions quiet so as to not disturb the residents. But not all were asleep at this time. Before the eyes of a housing estate security guard, Lu Xu sprang to his feet and jumped over the fence. The guard was dumbfounded. It was his first time to see someone jump that high. But before he returned from his shock, another 60-plus people queued up to jump inside. The guard gasped in disbelief. What's going on? Call the police. Now. But once he took out his phone, Lu Xu had jumped out over another estate wall, followed by the huge group of people. In the blink of an eye, they were all gone. The guard hesitated for a long time. What should he tell the police on the phone? Say, there were over 60 supermen chasing another superman, and when he was asked about their whereabouts, he would answer that they had just come in and gone out again. It sounded unconvincing even to himself. Puzzled, Lu Xu noticed that no matter how well he hid, those people always knew where to find him. Did they have some special power? To his horror, he suddenly realized that the monitoring cameras were all following his motions. The stationary ones were those without the function of being controlled remotely. On a second thought, Lu Xu leaped onto the rooftop. As compared to ground level, there were fewer surveillance devices on top. He was very certain that if he were caught, not only would he be given a good thrashing, but all his money would be taken away too. If that happened, his three days of hard work would all go down the drain? And his stone smashing would be futile? The thought provoked Lu Xu. No one could steal his money. Initially, he planned to draw Hao Jichao's group to him for a good robbery. But now, he himself was facing the risk of being robbed. Lu Xu could not stand it. Unable to catch Lu Xu, Hao Jichao and the rest were upset too, disperse yourselves into tens. But don't go too far. Don't underestimate this kid. Everyone already knew how powerful the kid was from Hao Jichao's black and blue face two days ago. In any case, Hao Jichao was ranked one of the top few in Class C. After the long, aimless pursuit, Lu Xu returned to the starting point. At a junction, he saw Chen Zhuan running towards him from his right. Overjoyed, Zhuan shouted, Save me, Brother Xu. 
Seeing the swarm of black men behind him, Lu Xu felt more at ease. He immediately threw the little fatty over his shoulder and continued his escape in a hurry. Chen Zuan was suddenly shrouded in a sense of security. After all, an unsteady ride was much more desirable than being beaten up. Chen Zuan exclaimed on Lu Xu's shoulder, Brother Xu, you are such a good bro. Uh? Oh. Those people were so shy aimless. So many of them are AAA after me alone. The little fatty was stammering due to being jolted. Suddenly, Lu Xu's attention was attracted by a roadside building. There must be a better plan than running forever. Furthermore, judging from the decrease in the number of pursuers behind them, how Ji Chao's plan of interception was clear. To tell the truth, no matter how powerful he was, it was impossible for Lu Xu to fight his way out of ten practitioners immediately. Once he was delayed, he would instantly be besieged by over a hundred enemies. At that moment, a tinge of warmth welled up in Lu Xu's heart at the sight of the incandescent light in that building. Unexpectedly, there was still someone on duty at this time in the police station. With the little fatty on his shoulder, Lu Xu dashed inside, excuse me. You may not believe me, but there are over hundred people out there waiting to beat me up. Chapter 345, Preemptive Measures Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios The silence in the police station was disrupted as the middle-aged policeman on duty cast a glimpse at Lu Xu. The way he carried Chen Zuan was simply too unique. The policeman hesitated for a few seconds and then asked, Can you put him down first? All right, Lu Xu put Chen Zuan down on the ground. What did you say? Over a hundred people are waiting to beat you up. Where are they? An air of justice surrounded the policeman. In his twenty-plus years as a policeman, he had never seen anyone blatantly engage in a mob fight at the police station. After all, the place itself was a deterrence over these outlaws. He rose and shot a glance outside and then turned to Lu Xu again, there's no one outside. Kid, this is not a place for jokes. Lu Xu poked his head outside, and as expected, there was no trace of those people at all. They were not stupid either. Seeing that Lu Xu had shamelessly gone inside the police station, they retreated straight away. The streets were empty and quiet, as if nothing had ever happened. Those people, who were running behind them with a beat him up he coming out of their mouths just a moment ago, seemed like an illusion as well. But the questions was, how could Lu Xu explain this to the policeman? Sorry man, over a hundred fighters wanted to chop me into pieces just now. For what? For the tribe? Nonsense. Lu Xu grinned. <laughs> we were joking. Please pardon us. The policeman looked at Lu Xu, a little skeptical, are you sure? Yes, of course, Lu Xu smiled broadly and pulled the little fatty outside with him before the policeman could react. However, once they were out, Hao Ji Chao and the rest immediately walked out of the shadows behind the buildings. Horrified, Lu Xu quickly retreated back into the police station. So they were waiting for them outside? Why this level of hatred? I only smashed some stones at the metro station? Lu Xu almost forgot that he had robbed their secret hoard the day before. In fact, it was a tug of war between the veterans and the newbies, which had always ended with the victory of the former. There was no reason for Lu Xu to disrupt the pattern. As Lu Xu darted back into the police station, the policeman asked, What's wrong this time? Lu Xu took a look outside. Fine, they were in the shadows again. In the absence of external assistance, how could they resolve this? Lu Xu knew very well that it was absolutely unacceptable to involve a third party in their issues. Things had come to a standstill. The policeman sensed that something was off, show me your identification card. Lu Xu pretended not to hear. The policeman walked closer, where are your identification cards? Lu Xu mused for a moment. Yeah. Where's my identification card? Who are you talking to? The man's face darkened instantly. From Wang Yuchi's distress, plus 199. 
Lu Xu and Chen Zuan looked at each other and they both knew that they could not delay it any longer. Since neither of them had their identification cards, the policemen had every reason to doubt their identity. If they were arrested, they would not be starved, but they would lose a lot of face. When the policeman was in a daze, Lu Xu suddenly threw the little fatty onto his shoulder like a madman and darted outside. Fire at me. Fire at me. Our country will be proud of me. Before the man could even react, Lu Xu had already stormed out. What the hell is going on? Fire what? Why would our country be proud of you? They turned out to be two psychopaths? From Wang Yuchi's distress, plus 399. Lu Xu ran out without stopping. Just when Hao Jichao was about to fight him, the policemen followed outside too, out of pure curiosity in the alleged psychopaths. Hence, without a choice, Hao Jichao's team retreated back into the shadows once again and stared helplessly as Lu Xu escaped from their sight. Hao Jichao clenched his teeth. What a cheeky person. Indeed, it would be inappropriate to reveal themselves at that moment, as it would probably have stupefied the policemen. After the policemen returned inside, Lu Xu was already nowhere to be found. On a side note, practitioners were really strong. Just a while ago, there was an interesting incident posted on the Golden Foundation. A Dao Yuan class student had jumped off from the third floor of a building following his breakup, but immediately went back to lessons after he landed uninjured. On that night alone, Hao Jichao and the rest contributed more than 40,000 distress points to Lu Xu. Having got rid of the pursuers, Chen Zuan was still badly frightened, Brother Xu, I would have been dead without you. From now onwards, I swear my life to you. Please don't. Can you please not say something so scary? It's midnight. Lu Xu was annoyed, do you know where the headquarter of the Heavenly Network is? Chen Zuan swallowed his saliva, yes, I know. In fact, it's no secret here. You know Heavenly King Ye, he hopes all of the foreign powers would target him so that he could wipe them out altogether. But, I think it's better not to tell you. Are you telling me or not? Really cannot. If I tell you, I guess we'll spend the remaining 11 days being chased all day and night. Chen Zuan was smart enough to know what Lu Xu was up to. If their conflict intensified, Chen Zuan himself might be the first one to suffer. He was already made well aware of his clear disadvantage in running off as compared to Lu Xu. With 700 yuan in Lu Xu's pocket, staying alive would not be an issue as of now. No matter how high the cost of living was in the capital, the money was enough for them to live for 10 days. Therefore, in Lu Xu's opinion, the current priority was not to make more money, but to fight against those who wanted to steal their money. Urban Survival, Day 4, Night Beat him up. Run. Urban survival, day 5, night. Beat him up. Run. Urban survival, day 6, night. Beat him up. Run. Well, you might not believe it but Lu Xu and Chen Zuan actually had not slept for three days. Now, we have reached a point where our very existence is at stake. Hence, we can no longer keep still and wait for our enemies to strike. Instead, we must take preemptive measures. On this ever-changing battlefield, we have to. By his side, Chen Zuan looked like a panda with his dark circles, what do you want? Just spit it out. You don't need to be so outlandish. Tell me where the headquarter of the Heavenly Network is. Lu Xu said firmly. In the afternoon of the same day, Lu Xu and the little fatty went to buy two sets of low-quality Heavenly Network-styled black clothes together with black masks, which cost as low as 120 yuan in total. But their camouflage had one extra feature, as even their eye bags were black. The two exchanged a look, and Lu Xu's eyes shimmered with the confidence of victory in sight. The only thing left was to wait until night fell.
What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show 